Hello everybody, welcome to this channel. Today we are going to discuss the DRAM organization and everything you need to know about DRAM and all its operation we will study in this lesson. Uh, please subscribe this channel and like this video and share as, as much as possible. So for knowing a DRAM, what exactly a DRAM is, we have to look the structure of a particular DIM. DIM nothing but DIM stands for dual inline memory module so this is a particular DIM this is called dual inline because it contains all the chips on this side as well as on its opposite side so there are a total 8 chips on one side and 8 chips on the back side of this DIM also that's why it is called dual inline memory module there is SIM SIMM which stands for single inline memory module which contains these chips on in only one side i have made a particular lecture about sim and dim and volatile and non volatile memories and computer memories uh, one previous lecture i have made on this so please have a look on that video and then you will understand this video better so this dim talking about this dim so there is a channel which is con uh, connected to a memory controller so when you zoom a channel then you will identify a particular dim which is this thing and inside a dim there is there are ranks actually so there are two ranks in this dim uh, one rank is this side and the other rank is the opposite opposite side of this dim so when you will look into a rank you will see there are eight chips so then a rank is further divided into chips and then when you will zoom into the chip you will find a zoom uh, a chip is divided into bank as well and then you will find row and column in the particular bank so how that is located please see here so this is a dim now you can see both the faces rank 0 and rank 1 so inside rank 0 there are chips so when you will zoom a particular chip you will find a chip structure like this so inside a chip you will find several banks for example here you can find four banks bank 0 bank 1 bank 2 and bank 3 so these banks are nothing but DRAM so these banks are called DRAM so when you look into the chip there are banks then in further banks further bank is divided into rows and columns so this is into 16 device DRAM bits number of output pins so when you see a by 16 or by, by 8 or by 4 device that means that in one go it will transfer that byte of memory for example there is uh, here it is written into 16 device which means in one go one chip will transfer 16 bits of data so here there are total four chips so each chip will transfer 16 bits of data in one go so total 64 bits will be transferred so our concern is to look into the DRAM or bank so how a DRAM is uh, organized and how what is the structure of DRAM we will look so it says 16 bit interface which means 16 bits from each chip in one go so in one read or write operation each chip will transfer 16 bits of data so this is the very basic structure of DRAM comparing it with SRAM SRAM has a complex structure made of NOT and NAND gates as well as the switches so you will find a both a word line and a bit line bit line is nothing but column and word line is your row so you will find both bit line and word line in both SRAM and DRAM but DRAM is the structure of DRAM is very simple in comparison with the SRAM. So we'll use DRAM for our storage. So this is how the DRAM is organized. So this is the organization of DRAM chip. That is the this is the bank only. When you zoom into the chip, you can find several banks are there as this figure shows. So this figure is nothing but banks. Bank has an array of rows and column which is a DRAM so this has memory cell array which means it has rows and it has columns 
So how this DRAM is organized will look. It has a row decoder which decodes the row address which is sent by the control bus and we have sense simplifier, row buffer, column decoder which decodes the column address and then data buffer. So we'll look the working of all these in next slide. So how a DRAM read operation is happened. For example, we have to read an address. So this is the address we have to read. So row decoder decodes a particular row which is mentioned in this address. So after row decoder decodes the particular address, that particular row is pushed to sense amplifier. So that particular row is present in the sense amplifier. Then you can access all the columns which are associated with this row means if for example this row is row 8 so you can access all the columns of this row you can access column 0 column 1 column 2 column 3 means you can access memory location 10 sorry 08 80 because the row is row number is 8 and the column number is 0 80 81 82 83 means row number is your 8 and the column numbers are 0 1 2 3 so uh, this is how the read operation happens it prevents uh, very much your, of your time means if you, for example if you want to row, uh, access any column so first it is better to access a particular row so it will save a lot of time so when a read operation is happened a particular row is pushed into the sense amplifier then all the columns are decoded by the column decoder and you can address a particular address so then that particular address is sent into the data bus. So this is how the read operation of DRAM is happened. When an address is comes, row decoder decodes the address of that, uh, uh, that address and then that particular address selects the row and then that row is pushed into the sense amplifier. Then the, that uh, row is present in the sense amplifier and then you can decode the column and you can access the particular row column location. So what is the working of this row buffer? We'll see. So what is a refresh? As in the previous lecture, I have discussed that DRAM needs to be refreshed periodically because DRAM uses a capacitor which loses its charge. So after I read, the content of DRAM cells are gone because the DRAM cell uses a capacitor and it loses its charge. The values are stored in the row buffer. So as DRAM loses its charge, so it's better to store the uh, values in the row buffer. So row buffer is used to store the values. So write them back into the cells for the next read operation. So if next read operation is happened, you can access the particular operation from the row buffer or particular row from the row buffer and you can write back to the cells. So write them back into the cells for the next read in future. So row buffer is used to store the values once you have accessed the particular location using row and column decoder. Then fairly gradually the DRAM cell will lose its content even if it is not accessed. Yeah that's true because DRAM uses a capacitor and that capacitor loses charge periodically so every time we need to refresh the DRAM. This is why it's called dynamic. Contrast to SRAM which is static. So SRAM is static and DRAM is dynamic. But Static means is it maintains its value forever. So no, as long as power is remains on, static RAM does not require any periodic refresh because it is static as long as power is on. All DRAM rows need to be regularly read and written. So this is how the whole structure of your CPU and memory controller should be there. So this is the CPU and cache. And this is the data line which connects to your memory controller. Memory controller controls all the DRAM operations. And these are all the DRAM which are connected to the memory controller. And this whole picture is this first slide only. Means after your memory controller, memory controller will be connected to a particular channel. And in that particular channel, several DIMMs will be connected. And when you zoom into the dim you will find two ranks if it is a huh, so uh, do dim is nothing but dual 
dual nine memory modules so there will be two ranks you will find a rank and when you will zoom into the rank you will find several chips and several chips contain several banks and banks is nothing but the DRAM which contains memory array of row and column. So this is how you can access a particular address inside the DRAM using row decoder and column decoder and DRAM needs to be refreshed periodically because it uses a capacitor for storing its charge. So if you have liked this video please subscribe this channel and share the video as much as possible. Thank you so much.